inherited my grandmother's handbag, it sort of suddenly brought my grandmother back into my life. I felt like the object was alive, it was vibrating, it was sort of talking to me, it was bringing back a whole host of memories. Um, and I just got very, very intrigued by this idea of the object as a source of inspiration, as something which might have a life of its own. join me in this kind of investigation of the power of objects and how we might use um, objects in our art practices. Lots of artists who felt that objects were the core part of their practice, that it's quite a self-defining sort of thing. I mean, I've been making this lot of work since then. And so the fact that it gave, you've had so much time to mm. develop new work, that's, that very rarely happens, yeah. I think, in a project. You know, you need two or three years to, to experiment a bit and things don't work. Mm. And I think that's, that's what was really good about it. Mm. It's not just making a piece of work for something. You actually have time to mm. let it grow. And my obsession, I was able to kind of use my obsession interest in dolls. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it, it's just, it's so slow and it's so methodical and it's so hard, it's hard work, you know. Yeah. But it's kind of, it's, 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 it's obsessive. May uh, and I'm here with Sonia Boué um, and we're here to talk about the Nuno project um, and also to kind of think about the ways that the project was developed and the way that your thinking developed. So first of all um, let's talk about how Nuno came about. Nuno means neither use nor ornament. That's correct and one of the most important things actually that happened very early on in the project which informed aspects of the decision to go with neither use nor ornament and also fundamentally change how we presented ourselves as we went along were the sensitivities of the autistic artists involved in the project. That happened very early on. Um, 
and this whole sort of um, issue that we have as autistic professionals about coming out yeah. and then dealing with the consequences of being out in in what you know sort of in, in unexpected ways. So you can be out and feel comfortable mm. in some environment, and then suddenly find yourself in another environment where it just doesn't feel okay at all. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it's not a. Um, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, no, no, do. No, well, I, I just wanted to pick up on that really because I think having been part of the process a little bit, I, you, you're at the centre of this kind of whirlwind as I can see right from the outside. Um, and it looks like very, very hard work, actually. But I think one of the things that has been really clear is, is not just, you know, different um, sensitivities mm. to talking about yourself as autistic mm. in, in the different uh, artists, but also, um, yeah, that the fact that the more that we go out and talk about ourselves as autistic professionals... Um, the more we become aware of very, very different responses from different people um, and that constant sense that you're having to mediate people's basic understanding mm. of what autism is so mm. that when you say you're autistic you could get a, a range of different mm. um, responses ranging from doubt and disbelief and extreme rudeness, uh, condescension, um, over-interest um, <laughs> I'm nodding vigorously. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a really it's a complicated place to be, and it feels deeply uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I would I would completely agree with you, and I think it's the complexity of this endeavour. So what we set out to do is really really complicated, and you have to be very nuanced about it. Mm. And so what was wonderful about Neither Use Nor Ornament as a concept was that it kind of encompassed the fact that, you know, the artistic side of the project really is about working with objects. Yeah. So it was perfect from that point of view. And the transformation of objects through the art, you know, through the art process, the art making process. So that covered that beautifully. And then the Neither Use Nor Ornament in terms of a kind of disparaging comment, mm. a, a term that's used to mean that, you know, something is pretty useless and it's yeah. a bit ugly too, sort of took on a bit of a meaning uh, for the neurodivergent and autistic side of the project. And I began thinking of that as a potential provocation mm. to audiences. Neither use nor ornament. Unwilling to be groomed, I was told I looked like I'd been dragged through a hedge backwards. I always pondered the backwards. Was it oh so essential to my leaf-stained self that backwards completed the look? Mm -hmm. I was no china doll to be placed and cooed at. They tried once, made me carnival princess and bade me wear a dress and sit and smile. <laughs> I sat and sullened, the dress a far cry from the beauty of my skinned knees and the thrill of the trees. Others got to be spiderlings and heroes and I, all ornament and uselessness. The ornamental didn't stick. If only you'd listen, you could fit. If only you weren't so angry, we would all fall in love. I didn't know that I was angry until they gave me the trophy to carry. Heavy it was, but each time I threw it away, someone handed it back, handed it back with a strained look and a worried nod, until the weight of it made me angry, and it wore a groove in the crook of my arm. What is beauty without use, I would wail. What good is a dress if it doesn't guard my knees when I climb my trees? Where are the pockets for all the perfect stones I will find? Where will I keep my treasure? It will not fit on my crown. Then they said it's important to be yourself. I knew that was a lie because I'd shown them me and it didn't fit. It was too tight on their shoulders and the waist was all tassels. It made them feel uncomfortable. So I took it off and kept it for plain dress up. I am use. That's the secret. I am all use and solutions. I am all hand movements and creations. I am all dancing keys and joy in the unnoticed. A child knows. A child took my hand and said, let's find you a nice beetle. That will make you smile. And we did. And it did. And there are no bigger secrets to uncover than the truth of what is use and what is ornament. And why. Thank you very much.